have a very dapper guest in studio and we're going to take apart a couple of things, hopefully play with a couple of videos to just give you a kind of feel of what's going on around in different places in the country. And fortunate, unfortunate act of God that is. <coughs> Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Yes. And I've survived the flood. I'm, I'm, I, you did it well. You did it well. Yes, <laughs> yes. What's uh, your good name, sir? My name is Wafula Sini. Mm -hmm. uh, my first name, I don't like it, but it's called, it's Mike. Uh -huh. yeah. Why don't you like it? You know, when I was growing up, uh -huh. <laughs> I grew up in the village. Uh -huh. And uh, I grew up with my grandparents. Mm -hmm. And my grandfather used to call me Mikaili. And <laughs> I never <laughs> used to like that name. Uh -huh. And eventually, when I grew up, mm -hmm. I had to change my name. Mm -hmm. um, of course, in primary school, from Michael mm -hmm. to Mike. Because mm -hmm. I thought Mike was a bit dapper. Mm -hmm. But then when, when he passed on, mm -hmm. I missed the Mikaeli name. So okay. I chose never to use it um, in public uh, mm -hmm. just for the sake of the ID and certificates. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. So that is the little story about why I don't like the Mike. Uh -huh. Yeah. I think of a name is very powerful. Like it's basically how you identify yeah. with, I guess, yourself, with your roots, with your family, and all that. So I'm, I'm glad you're taking control of your identity. Yeah, wafula, wafula means rain, by the way. So I rain, I rain, I rain everywhere I, every I go. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it does. It does really coincide with this because it's the month that I was born as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So when, before we get to, okay, let me start it this way. We just had a very interesting conversation with my co-host. His name is Brian Sakwa. Okay. And, and we have thrown a couple of ideas around, but before we get to crisis control, like when you hear floods, what do you immediately think? Do you think it's just one area, is like a dam that is flooded? Or when you hear floods, what do you think? When I hear about floods, mm -hmm. I just remember the story I heard in the mm -hmm. Sunday school, mm -hmm. and the Noah, yeah, and the <laughs> floods. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is how much I understand the floods. Mm -hmm. for. And um, it, it, uh, I, I, I got so frightened when mm -hmm. I heard about that story from the Bible. Mm -hmm. And when I hear about floods now mm -hmm. as an adult, it still frightens me mm -hmm. because of the destruction that comes with the floods. Mm -hmm. So that is basically what uh, comes into my mind. And it's very unfortunate that uh, we are living to be victims of what the floods can really cause. You know, water is a very essential element in our bodies as well as livelihood. But it's a, it's, it's a destructive uh, uh, kind of a thing when it's not controlled. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, so is there a possibility that this excess water, because it's in milliliters, Neo? Yes. yes. We are f facing an increase of over 100, and because we have short trains and long trains. Long trains, yes. In the country, yes, and they have different seasons. But for some reason, instead of getting the natural, I think it's around 300, now we're getting an overflow of that. Is there any way? possibility that this can be harvested? Uh, I think uh, when, when, when the meteorological report and uh, weather forecasting was done about a year ago, that mm -hmm. was in May last year, mm -hmm. there was, uh, uh, there was an, uh, what do you call, a foreshadowing of this kind of rainfall. Mm -hmm. Because in March, it was at around 40 mm -hmm. milliliters. And then in April, the forecast was giving us about 129 mm -hmm. milliliters, which is way above from uh, 40 to 30, 30, between 30 and 40 mm -hmm. milliliters. And uh, the reason why we have meteorological departments and the reason why we have uh, government agencies that handle these uh, in monopoly is to enable for planning. Mm -hmm. Because you see, uh, when we have uh, departments, mm -hmm. for the like for example, the NDMA, the National Disaster Management Authority, mm -hmm. which is uh, vested clearly to handle disasters in a country. And mm -hmm. one of the things that uh, defines a disaster is an extreme kind of a rainfall mm -hmm. or an extreme kind of um, heat wave or a drought. Mm -hmm. So that one is to enable for facilitation of planning when that thing 
occurs, when that disaster occurs. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, as uh, we speak now, uh, it looks like we can only use the boats, which are not available. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we had planned for the boats, actually. Mm -hmm. And I wonder how the boats would have helped us. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, the question should be, how did we get to this level of destruction? Because um, I presume Nairobi has never had uh, such mass destruction mm -hmm. uh, of this magnitude in the previous years. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I put it to the disruption of the environment mm -hmm. at large. Because when you look at uh, what the trees does mm -hmm. to the environment, they suck and they help to strengthen the soil. But right now we've had too much constructions mm -hmm. that have led to the destruction of the environment. Mm -hmm. The green environment is the easiest way to manage uh, the floods mm -hmm. or the heavy rains. Because of course, much of their water is absorbed by the trees and the green environment, which in Nairobi at the moment, we don't have even our beautiful park here, mm -hmm. has been modernized too much to look like more of a building structure than a, a park. Mm -hmm. So back to your question, I don't think at the moment there is any sustainable solution that you can have to harvest uh, the water. Mm -hmm. It's a waste. Much as it's a disaster, it's mm -hmm. still a waste because in the next three or four months, we are going to go back to lack of shortage of water. Mm -hmm. And even somehow, we are going to experience some droughts in some parts of the country. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's just a dreadful cycle. It, it, it's a cycle that has been there. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say it's, uh, it's the problem that we have with the people that we've vested our, our responsibility, we've given them the responsibility of taking care of our affairs. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's easier for someone to give you a responsibility and it's another thing for you to see the responsibility to conclusion. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you for bringing that up. Now, before we get to the videos that I'm sure my able team is ready to place uh, in viewing for me. Yeah. What is, we used, this particular segment used to be called Youth and Politics, but we changed it for one reason alone. We yeah. want to somehow not really separate, but try and understand how youth affairs can be an am amalgamation of just things that the people, the youth are facing, yeah. whether it's political or not. It's okay. just affairs of the youth. Okay. So one of the things that I have come to notice is influencers play a very big part uh, in, in our space because everything is a di digital. Yeah. So you'll find a particular influencer talking about floods in whichever way or manner they choose. Then at the comments, because comments is where they're at, you'd find someone asking, okay, but what does the government have to do with the water. This yes. is an act of God. Yeah. Yes, but who is, who are we supposed to be asking? And I can see we're ready. <laughs> I can see we're ready. So I'm just going to allow you to see that while I, <clears throat> I read for you a couple of statistics. So one of them mm -hmm. is, we're ready for you. <laughs> Hashtag why it's a body. So a couple of statistics is we have 37,595 households have been affected. 19,338 households displaced. 5,774 livestock lost. 32,712 acres of crops destroyed. And we've not even started talking about lives yeah. lost, people who are missing. And finally, funny thing is, I don't know, it's not, it's not funny, but the thing to note is, I don't know why Nairobi is so heavily affected. Of all the 33 counties that are facing floods, like with this magnitude, okay. Nairobi is catching the heat of it. I think uh, Nairobi, uh, originally Nairobi was a plain, a mm -hmm. plain land. Uh -huh. Like it was kind of sunken. No, Masai, yeah. like you see, when you're in Nairobi, it's mm -hmm. like you're kind of sunken. When you go to the river, mm -hmm. the edge, the, the, just the shores of the river. So it was a swampy kind of a region. And mm -hmm. even when you walk, when it's uh, not flooding, mm -hmm. you realize that the kind of the soil that is in Nairobi mm -hmm. looks almost the same as um, a swampy soil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So much of the water tends to collect from the upper regions, from the high highlands, like for example, from Kiambu, mm -hmm. from uh, even from uh, 
the parts of the eastern, mm -hmm. the water is <coughs> Sorry. somehow collected mm -hmm. in the Nairobi. So the problem is uh, we have drainage, but the drainage is not sustainable to mm -hmm. the amount of um, excess water that overflows into Nairobi. Mm -hmm. uh, apart from that, again, it is the destruction of the green environment mm -hmm. because the green environment plays a major role in uh, easing the effect of excess water mm -hmm. and excess floods or when we have floods it, and even the winds, the green environment really helps to curb that. So I think Nairobi has been hit so hard mm -hmm. because of those two factors and uh, couple that with uh, the normal clogged uh, drainage system, mm -hmm. it makes it even worse because you don't know whether you are stepping in water, you are swimming in water or mm -hmm. you are swimming in the sewer because wow. our sewer system is also not Wanting. so well maintained. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, but that sounds like poor planning. Yeah. You see, the, the plan that we use now and even the structures, mm -hmm. were those ones that were made just before and just after the, uh, the independence. Mm -hmm. And that is way long time ago when Nairobi was not overly populated. Mm -hmm. Right now, Nairobi has about uh, 5 million people, mm -hmm. Kenyans. Who, Alone. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Every, every single day we have over 5 million people coming to Nairobi. And that one mm -hmm. means that then we need proper planning to accommodate this movement of people into Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And that is why it's difficult because of the needs mm -hmm. of these people as well as the magnitude of the kind of the planning that we are using at the moment. Because we are not, they are not proper structural uh, planning uh, that suits this kind of the uh, decade mm -hmm. of the, 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 the 21st century. Mm -hmm. uh, we are still using, if I should say, the old Mm -hmm. kind of structures and structural uh, plannings because of course that one goes back to the leadership when you when you walk at the city hall mm -hmm. that is where all the problems of Nairobi comes from mm -hmm. uh, yes and especially manifesting in this kind of a disaster that you're facing mm -hmm. yes all right i want to read for you an article just before we play our first video okay and this is dated 2023 that is last year so just for context was um okay uh it's just about the let me read the highlights so county governments will now be forced to readjust their budget and set aside an emergency kitty from their own shareable revenue fund to address the effects on ongoing el nino rains and these are the rains that his excellency said we prayed away last okay. year yeah. that's why they didn't happen yeah yes all right, so the state house spokesperson, now I've just gone a little bit into the story, said the state had allocated 7 billion shillings to address the plight of Kenyans across the country. And just above that, uh, the uh, state, state house spokesperson, that is Hussein Mohammed, insisted that a total of 10 billion shillings had already been sent to counties and another 10 billion would be due by the end of now, that particular week when the article was. So that's... Give or take, that's already 20 in billions yes. of shillings, yeah. yes. And you have another 7 billion shillings aside to address everywhere. Yes. 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 Yeah. So yeah. that's 27 billion shillings. But that was last year. Mm -hmm. And it didn't happen because, of course, we prayed and our prayers was an were answered or postponed. I'm not quite sure which, which is which because now here we are. So, uh-huh. Show me, please, the first video. Hashtag is my morning. <laughs> Eh, photo yo, photo yo. Photo yi. Yule anamwambia aingie msitu wa Mwanga. Hao manyota ka photo sana. Hao ni wengi, hao ni wengi. Mama mzuri ile ni inamwagika. Hiyo ni kubwa na pale. Hao ni mapenzi. Oh, 
ameenda yule ameenda na mahali mbaya oh oh sikarona eh ameenda kwingine ameenda wewe mazenia So that particular video is about capsizing with uh, many people in Garissa Mororo. That's just one of the things. So funny, again, not funny in the actual sense, but we were looking at that video and he reminded me, by the way, someone who could be watching thinks this is a getaway. This is a lake. Yeah. This is someone just eh, people minding their own business, living how they've been living for some time now. But that's not actually the case. So what's going on? And that is Garissa. Mm. And Garissa is known no, for Juakali Kabisa. So you can imagine how much water has been wasted mm -hmm. if we had clear plants. Uh, for Garissa and even the, the, the leadership in Garissa mm -hmm. uh, from the members of county assembly. I wonder what sort of bills they passed because I believed that when the county governments were formed, they were formed to address the immediate needs mm -hmm. of specific counties because uh, of the understanding that different counties, different regions have got different needs in terms of what they need to, um, to help themselves with. Mm -hmm. So... I really don't know what is the problem, but I think uh, our biggest problem begins and ends with us as individuals because, um, you see, we've given so much power. You know, Kenya is not, um, is not like, for example, the UK where mm -hmm. we have the government and then we have the, 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 the state, the head of government and then the head of the state. Mm -hmm. Kenya is totally different, whereby the head of the state is the head of the government. Mm -hmm. And with that sort of understanding, then it breeds in uh, selfish interests. Mm -hmm. And with selfish interest, uh, then there is greed, too much greed. So I imagine that we have uh, so many people who are very selfish and very greedy. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I prefer to be at least one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you are selfish, don't be greedy. So, wow. that, so that whatever you have, you don't share it with people, but mm -hmm. you're not taking more. And if you're greedy, mm -hmm. don't be selfish. Mm -hmm. So that whatever you're grabbing, share. share it with people so that everybody can feel the impact. But oh. if you have both, mm -hmm. then that is monstrous. Mm -hmm. And I think um, a majority of uh, what we have in terms of uh, leadership mm -hmm. uh, are extremely selfish and extremely greedy. Mm -hmm. to the level that they don't care what the next person is facing. Mm -hmm. And this is so sad. You see, <coughs> individual people, individual Kenyans, mm -hmm. are, doing, are going out of their ways to try and help. And how, much people, how many people can be saved in such boats? Mm -hmm. We don't have the machineries as mm -hmm. individuals. That is a, a responsibility that is vested in the government. And it's so sad that now it's a time that the government asks the citizens mm -hmm. to do whatever we can within our ways mm -hmm. or within our means to help each other. Mm -hmm. But then we had a whole year, we've had five years to plan for this mm -hmm. and to plan for more disasters because right now we are focused on the floods. Are we asking ourselves what could be the next disaster because it's going to come and that one we can never avoid. How about planning for the drought? As a government, when you see such uh, volumes of water being wasted in a dry, uh, in a region that is normally dry. Mm -hmm. There is so much that happens in Garissa. Mm -hmm. There is livestock, there is um, a lot of things, a lot of dam sites, a lot of uh, toxic whatever mm -hmm. were dumped in Garissa. So you can imagine even here in Nairobi, mm -hmm. you still face the problems that might never be cured in a short period of time. And it's as simple as from the source of the water and the flooding. Mm -hmm. So I think it is so disheartening uh, to be a Kenyan in some moments, mm -hmm. and especially in moments where you see logic is not being, or you wonder whether there is logic or whether you live in a totally different sort of a country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so 
for me, I think uh, with the 20 plus billion mm -hmm. that was uh, allocated for this function, mm -hmm. that money is not there. Mm -hmm. And I bet you can never find it there. And perhaps more money is being slashed somewhere so mm -hmm. that it can be allocated for these. And it will only be allocated when the floods are now ending. Mm -hmm. So that people can have, because we have so many greedy people mm -hmm. and they are very selfish. They don't care what happens. I should have put the disclaimer first, but it's never too late to disclaim. Guys, any sentiments expressed here do not reflect those of the station, but we will uh, give you facts. Yes, and credible facts. We can go to our mother station, KBC Digital, for further information on the same. So there is another video. We have seen on the drowning uh, issue is uh, uh, we have had uh, cases in Narok where uh, drowning incidences have been reported to our emergency operation center at the headquarters, and uh, we are we are working around the clock to support and make sure that. Uh, 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 the people who have drowned are being supported. The families are, are being given psychosocial counseling. And indeed, the Kenya Red Cross is supporting each and every step. And we are also on high alert, especially uh, in areas that are seeing uh, uh, increased water levels, including Baringo, uh, where uh, we are working very closely with the, the water department at the national level to ensure that uh, the water pans that are dangerous and that, and that have already seen uh, spillages are being attended to. As Red Cross, we want to call on our people that uh, uh, let us not cross on areas where flooding is, ex is being experienced. Let us be vigilant. Our number is 1199. When there is a, any disaster, I want to call, I want to say that that is a toll-free number. You are able to call on this number and we will be able to support. So there we have the Kenya Red Cross head of South Rift region, Felix Maio, mm -hmm. who has asked residents of regions prone to flash floods to exercise caution during the heavy downpour. And if you have noted, there is a toll-free line. So as far as damage or crisis control, Rose, how are you feeling about what you've just seen? It's, it's a pity and uh, I think uh, this one helps us to learn. And even as leaders from, because uh, you see, it, it's affected across several counties, about 25. Mm -hmm. More than half the counties have been affected. And you can imagine if it continues like that and if we don't have the measures to, f to come, a foreseeable kind of the same disaster it will it will affect because even for Baringo uh, we have landslides mm -hmm. we are forgetting about landslide which is even worse than the floods mm -hmm. so I think as Kenyans this one gives us an eye um, opener mm -hmm. uh, to always be vigilant and even I, I, I was watching a certain clip where people just bought land mm -hmm. and they built and some just bought houses mm -hmm. and <laughs> when the floods have come mm -hmm. it is so sad and so disheartening to see that their land is actually some sort of a river some sort of a swamp because their, their, their houses have been swept they have been filled with water so I think uh, as a country, we, we, we really need to look out for each other. And as leaders, we really need to be honest with each other and mm -hmm. just take the responsibility that we've been given because we've been given the mandate mm -hmm. by the people. And if they're not there, then leaders do not really have anybody to lead. And to lead is just to show direction. Mm -hmm. So I'm expecting that... Um, Perhaps leadership should, do, should show the citizens the right directions as to how they are going to handle the floods at the moment. Mm -hmm. And for the long term, what are the, the mitigating measures mm -hmm. for them to ensure that we no longer have such as a problem? 30, 35,000 houses, uh, households, that is a lot, a huge number mm -hmm. to imagine because you put that with... Uh, a, a lot of people that are homeless as well. You can imagine how many people are homeless mm. who have been always homeless. The street kids, 
you see they're also people, they're also human beings, and they need the care of the, uh, of the country and the leadership. Mm -hmm. So you look at the amount of acreage, about 37,000, you said? Mm -hmm. 37,000. You look at the cattle, about 5,000 plus and going. Um, I just saw that there was a breaking news about uh, schools opening next mm -hmm. week, but I don't think we are still even ready to let the kids go, go to, school to school because uh, <laughs> you can imagine a school and then we have such a flood. Mm -hmm. it, it's going to be chaotic and especially to the kids. Uh, Red Cross in the, in, the, in the South Rift have also said that they are going to have the counseling to mm -hmm. people that have been affected. Yes. I think that is a good gesture. Um, and uh, I believe it's something that is going to continually happen because some people have never experienced, especially the young, have never experienced the floods. And some of them were in it. They swam in water. So mm. I think uh, it is just um, a wake-up call mm -hmm. that we are not doing anything good and we should change and do things differently to benefit everybody. Mm -hmm. Yes. When you hear a leader of whichever hierarchy, yes. as long as this particular person was voted in by the people, yeah. stand on a platform and say, okay, evacuate. To where, are we, where are we going? You cannot what evacuate. What is the appropriate response? I think uh, the, the term a leader has been really mis misconceived. Eh? Mm -hmm. A leader should show the, the direction, always. Like you should lead, you should tell us we are going, we are moving from here and you are going to this place. So you give solution. To lead is basically to give directions mm -hmm. as to offer a sustainable kind of a solution to a given crisis. Uh, I think uh, when you talked about uh, influencers and all that, mm -hmm. most of uh, the leadership that we have, you know, getting into leadership in Kenya has become easy, mm -hmm. very easy as to if you are able to mobilize a given group mm -hmm. to stand by you, then you are sure to get into leadership. Mm -hmm. But then that is one thing. Now, leading becomes a bit problematic. And that is, I think that is the crisis we face. And that is why someone would stand on the podium and say, uh, evacuate. Mm -hmm. And you don't know where to, you don't know what are you going to eat. Do we have the food supply? Mm -hmm. Because you see, that is the national security. And if we don't focus on the national security, which is basically food, um, the basic one is accommodation and the safety of the of the of the citizenry. Then mm -hmm. there is a problem. So, what comes into my mind is basically we don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. It's something that we thought it would be just a, a kind of a flash flood, mm -hmm. but then it stayed, mm -hmm. and we didn't plan for it. And we're expecting more. And we're expecting to have solutions. So mm -hmm. what happens is, um, I'm just looking at a scenario where <coughs> we have the, 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 the leadership has just sat back and wait and hope that the flood doesn't wipe everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so we're after just crossing fingers now. Yes, the flood doesn't wipe everyone. Okay. And at the end of it, those that would have been wasted by the floods, mm -hmm. We'll say sorry and then we'll move on because we don't have solutions. Wow. Okay. We have another video up. Remember, you can interact with us at White54 on Facebook, White54 channel on X, White54 underscore channel on the gram. Hashtag of the day is White in the morning. You're watching Youth Affairs currently. And here is another video. Oh, no. I'm going to Prior clip was as of last night what Thika Superhighway was looking like. As of last night, Thika Super who? Superhighway, super yes. So uh, last time it was expressway, now it's a superhighway. Yeah. These are structures that we are still trying to work towards, as in payoff in debt. So what happened? Did they forget to put drainage? 
You see, mm -hmm. uh, the one for the expressway, uh, there was a time I was stuck on the expressway because of fuel and wow. it was raining mm -hmm. and I experienced it. Mm -hmm. It was not during the floods, mm -hmm. it was just the short rains. Mm -hmm. It was about 10-15 uh, minutes fuel Elisha on the on the on the expressway, wow. and I was at um, just opposite the the Bunge chambers, mm -hmm. the Bunge tower, just there, and I had to literally leave the car and walk all the way to Neno, and mm. then I went down, and it was chaotic, and it was just about five to ten minutes, kind of a rain, normal rains, mm -hmm. so uh, that is so sad for a development that is so huge and so um, it's, it's considered one of the game changers in our country. Mm -hmm. When you look at the super highway, it is under the Kenna. The, and the other day we saw the, 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 the excavator trying to get <laughs> <laughs> water that had been... I honestly thought that was a meme. Until it's not a meme. It There's wasn't a meme. It was actually, they were trying to unclog some um, drainage. It had been blocked. So they were trying to unclog it. But I think whoever took the clip also mm -hmm. did some sort of, uh, he didn't do it to conclusion because he only took where the excavator was uh, draining, trying to drain water to the other level. But I think the excavator was trying to remove some blockages on the drainage. Mm -hmm. So you look at uh, that as a development and you look at it the way it looks like it looked like last night and then you wonder how is it even a super highway because I believe uh, uh, the government, the taxpayers money is allocated to Kenya National Highway Authority mm -hmm. to do what we call the maintenance and when you walk on the roads on our highways you look at you see the fuel levy mm -hmm. and the fuel levy wow. is basically meant to do the maintenance of that particular road mm -hmm. so that the users feel mm -hmm. that this road is okay uh, for us to use and it's safe but mm -hmm. that is not the case for the thicker super highway mm -hmm. and it's so sad that we have such big projects that have been so good and instrumental into our movements but again, we don't have the mitigation um, uh, processes or plans whenever we have problems. You look at uh, the superhighway, the thicker superhighway, mm -hmm. sometimes you go and you see the drainage mm -hmm. and you wonder whether <laughs> this is a superhighway because mm -hmm. the drainage are never really maintained in any way, in any sort. The roads are dirty and all that. And much of it is to us as citizens because we are also not so disciplined. Mm. We dump everything on the road as long as it is not around your space. You just so dump plastic. Yes, we, we, uh, it's, it's just a culture that is not right mm -hmm. for us as Kenyans, especially at this age and year. We should take responsibility of our facilities, mm -hmm. much as we also call for those that we um, have the mandate to take care of those facilities. We should help them as well. But I think uh, much the back starts with, stops with the leadership because why would someone throw a bottle and not being punished for that? Mm -hmm. In some countries you visit, for you even just to to, to dump a piece of paper not amounts to a huge I penalty. I have been to Singapore. Singapore, if you litter, it is a criminal offense. Yes, yes. That's why that city is so clean. It's so clean. Mm. You see, those are the mecca and Singapore. <laughs> is a country that borrowed money from Them Kenya. And Malaysia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Mala Malaysia borrowed our blueprint when Martha, not Martha, Charity Ngilu, mm -hmm. the health blu blueprint when Charity Ngilu was the cabinet minister, minister for health. No. It was just the other day mm -hmm. we were living and we were, yeah. So now Malaysia has the best medical, uh, the, 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 the public medical services, health services. Mm -hmm. But Kenya, we are still grappling with an issue of strikes and mm -hmm. people are just dying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can imagine what a disciplined country and a proper leadership country can, can, can do to its citizen. It can offer so much. So as, as a country, we, we, we really need to rethink our culture. Mm -hmm. We are a country of people who have uh, gone to school, the most learned in East Africa, I should say. And in, on the global map, we really perform so well in terms of our literacy. But then when it comes that we've come back home, mm -hmm. we, we, we really don't look like 
how we are viewed on the on the global space mm -hmm. which is so which is so sad mm -hmm. yeah like I, I saw today the president is convening the uh, the Africa whatever that is none of our business today mm -hmm. our business is how do we solve the and some sometimes it's difficult to speak about it but it's just the truth mm -hmm. because we don't have the priorities and I think we just move everything we move forward mm -hmm. for the sake of what do I get and how do I get it and if it's going to help me let me pursue that which is wrong mm -hmm. yeah all right I want us to watch another video well, I'm, I'm thinking this is the one that we watched already. Just for the <laughs> All right, so my question is, this is the first video I think we went with. This is now it has a caption, yes, the yes. one in Garissa. Yeah. So my question is, is this terrible timing that an act of God should find our health care in a crisis as well? Because now we're being faced by things that we were taught in school, we weren't even curious about waterborne diseases and all things like that. And now it's a whole wave around counties, basically the whole country. But now when we get sick, there are no doctors. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a tough time to be sick, to get sick now. <sighs> because, uh, and especially, it's a tough time to get sick and you cannot afford proper medication. Mm -hmm. Yes. You see, I think we, we you see, we should not always bring God into problems that we can solve. Wow. Uh -huh. I think God has given, I always, my philosophy has always been when, when you wake up and you see the sunrise, then God has cleared you to, mm -hmm. to make change mm -hmm. in your life and the people around you. And sometimes, <laughs> you know, we can never pray away from our problems mm -hmm. without, and even the Bible says that to prayer or faith without action. So you, we should strike a balance mm -hmm. because you see, we've, we've over prayed mm -hmm. as a country. And we've, the other day, we just say that um, we prayed for the, for the rains. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it came and then it disappeared. Mm -hmm. Right now, okay, we are praying so that the rains stop. Mm -hmm. And then it gets us back to the, to the drought. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, what is our priorities mm -hmm. as a country? Do we really have the right priorities for each one of us? And the right priorities is, are we safe? Because before we do anything else, we need to be safe. Uh, are we safe as a country? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. <coughs> I, think, mm -hmm. I think God has just been holding uh, so much from happening uh, to enable a majority of us to survive the next day. Because you look at uh, the floods, mm -hmm. you look at the drainage and the sewers, uh, uh, as we mentioned earlier, that is a disaster that might <laughs> never be solved in a day if if God were to leave that one to affect us because of the airborne and the waterborne and any sort of disease that would come out of that. And then now we look at the situation where the doctors do not want to go to, to work hmm. because, of course, they have a collective bargaining that they had. And yes. <laughs> coincidentally, uh, the, uh, in a few days, we are celebrating the Labor Day. Mm -hmm. I don't know what we normally celebrate, because uh, when you look at even the minimum wage bill, that they normally... Every time I hear Labor Day, all I hear is that song. Solidarity <laughs> forever. You know, it started with us. The mm -hmm. teachers used to... Uh, I'm a teacher by profession. Oh. Yeah, but I didn't go into teaching. Yeah. It, we used to be the ones who used to always sing that song. Mm -hmm. Until CBC came. When CBC came, then we... 
much of our food we get from school. You know, thank you for saying <laughs> that because Kidogo <laughs> Mbea, teachers because haven't gone on strike in some time. Yes, mm -hmm. because there is food. And you see, mm -hmm. the stomach that is full mm -hmm. does not have the reason to go on the streets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, It's only the stomach that is rambling mm -hmm. and requesting and demanding for food that makes you to go on the street. But you see, that uh, aside, mm -hmm. on Wednesday we are going to celebrate the what do you call it, the Labor, Labor Day. Day. And uh, we've been celebrating it, we've been giving promises, and we've been giving promises that we do not fulfill as a country. Uh, right, right now, when you look at uh, the common Mwanainchi, who is going to work, mm -hmm. they are struggling. Even with the money that they get in form of wages and salaries, mm -hmm. they are struggling because it is not consumer to what they want to fulfill or to, to, to meet their needs. You look at the doctors, at one point you feel like whatever they are doing is wrong, but on the other hand you feel like it is a deserved thing because if I promise to bring you a lollipop, I should just bring it tomorrow. When we if find I promise, somewhere. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because I know when I go out, I'll get the lollipop and I'll bring it. Mm -hmm. So if I don't come with it, you have the reason to sulk and to be mad at me. And I think it's simply because uh, this one will maybe make other people or other professions uh, or other workers of the government to go on the strikes as well. Mm -hmm. And that is why you had the, uh, the proposal by the CS, mm -hmm. Moses Kuria, about uh, people not having... Uh, those government workers to be on on, on, on contractual basis, mm -hmm. which I think government workers have been on contractual basis because of the strategic plans. We have been having the RRI, the 100 days and all that, the performance contracting. They have been signing all that, just that they are on pensionable and permanent terms. But I don't think there is anything new, apart from, of course, uh, removing all the pensions and whatever the, uh, the, the, the government workers are entitled to. So it's a sad state of affairs that we face the floods and we face a medical uh, or a health crisis. But then, uh, as I said, the head of the government mm -hmm. is still the head of the state in mm -hmm. Kenya, and that is where the problem is. We should just uh, find the solutions and you and I do not have the mandate like to say this is the solution. We cannot, we don't have any mandate or authority to give direction. Mm -hmm. But uh, them that are in those positions should act because uh, you cannot tell people to go back to, 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 to the office and you've not given them an assurance of what you had promised them. Mm -hmm. At least tell them we are not giving you this because of A, B, C, D, but we'll do this. Except for the now, instead of, of a lollipop, it's remuneration, <laughs> and it's basically is my livelihood. Yeah. Yes. And it's so hard because mm -hmm. now people do not have a livelihood. Everybody, those people who are unemployed and those that are employed, are actually feeling the pinch. Mm -hmm. Those who are in business, you see, business was considered as one of the most lucrative source of uh, income. Mm -hmm you can no longer do business when there is floods mm. yeah and even when you do business you can no longer be sustainable when uh, a lot of what you are you're you are getting as income is being taken back mm -hmm. yeah, for the sake of helping mm -hmm. the majority of you and only the majority of you to face mm -hmm. the pangs of the floods mm -hmm. yeah all right, I think we have to cut this conversation short, but it's, it's been quite intriguing. Again, disclaimer, any thoughts, sentiments that have been expressed here do not reflect those of the station. Yes. Yeah. Facts, you can please refer to our mother station, KBC Digital, and you'll get everything there. It's credible and accurate, that at least I can attest. So maybe in a sentence, yes. <laughs> if you would just talk to the youth, Yes. right now yeah express a way to say please be safe <laughs> without be, without telling them to evacuate <laughs> uh, i think uh, we all fall in the category of the youth the youths are always have always been the backbone of uh, any society because we are energetic we are young mm -hmm. 
and uh, we we are sharp, we are fast in everything. So I believe uh, with the floods, it's something that is passing. Mm -hmm. But let us open our eyes and look for the long-term solutions. Let mm -hmm. us not wait to be told what to do mm -hmm. for ourselves because apparently, not apparently, factually you are the majority. Mm -hmm. And uh, being the majority then we mean, it means we need to hold each other's hand and walk as a team. Because a team will always, a team that works together will always have a victory at the end of the tunnel. Let us not look at the solution now. Let us look at the solution for the long term, for the long term, let's say, uh, way beyond mm -hmm. the floods. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. I, my last, last question, now truly last. Yes. I understand that you plan to vie for a certain seat come next election. Yeah, with God's permission and will, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, I'll vie. Ah, okay. Uh, I'll contest because anybody has to contest for mm -hmm. them uh, to become change makers in our society. You need to to put yourself out there because, mm -hmm. as I said, it's not just about talking and sitting. Mm -hmm. It's about talking and taking action. And one of the ways that uh, I intend to take action is through uh, contesting for any electable position in the country mm -hmm. and see whether my services would uh, be of beneficial because mm -hmm. I believe in myself and uh, I believe that uh, anyone with breath and uh, uh, anyone with the, the right mind can uh, mm -hmm. uh, can influence change in the society. Yes. All right. Yeah. I, I'll be looking forward to seeing how that goes. All the best. <laughs> Thank you. Now, I'm very inclined to start calling you Mwalimu because you've told me you're yeah, a teacher. Mwalimu. Very, <laughs> very inclined to call you Mwalimu. Yes. Thank you one more time for coming to the studio. It has been a very intriguing conversation. I hope you learned a thing or two. Yeah. Uh, yes, please do stay tuned here because we still have Brian Sokwa 101 who is about to come with a conversation with two gentlemen, if I am not mistaken. You can find him at Brian Sokwa 101. You can find me at Kalani Val and of course at Stephanie Ayeta. Hashtag is why in the morning. I'll see you right after the break.